Raise your hands. How many of us enjoy good competition? <laughs> Who doesn't look forward to the game of the week? The best of the best. Two undefeated teams going head to head. And even outside of sports, who doesn't love a battle of wits? Two strong debaters, political opponents trying to best each other. In a courtroom, the best prosecutor versus the best defender. In science, the irresistible force meeting the unmovable object. In a movie, the hero versus the villain. The ultimate protagonist versus the ultimate antagonist. The climax of every action drama. Let's look at tonight's action drama. It can be said that for every emotional high, there is an equal and offsetting emotional low as life balances out. And before our gospel text begins, Jesus had just been baptized by John in the Jordan. The skies opened. The Holy Spirit descended on Jesus as a dove, and the voice of God himself declared, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. That's the emotional and spiritual high point for Jesus. But immediately, to focus on the tasks at hand, to prepare for the ultimate showdown with the devil that will culminate at the cross, to foreshadow the final victory Jesus wins, Jesus was led into the desert for 40 days. 40 days of heat, 40 days without food, this the emotional low. Jesus is tired, he's weak, he's physically compromised. And now Satan comes along to test for cracks in Jesus' armor. That's how Satan operates. And I'll give you an example to prove just that. Here at church, Sunday morning or Monday night, can Satan touch you? Do you feel like sinning? Is not right now God the Father, Jesus our Lord, in the front of your mind? You've confessed your sins, you're at peace with God, you're at peace with one another, an emotional and spiritual high. But later, tomorrow, Wednesday afternoon, when someone pushes your buttons, when you become frustrated, stressed out, or feeling violated somehow, God gets pushed to the back of your mind. And Satan says, go ahead, lash out, get it off your chest, think about yourself. And you may react to something in ways unbecoming of a child of God. A spiritual low. Yes, there's times when Satan cannot touch you. And others when you are most vulnerable to attack. Times of weakness. So Satan is there, ready to take full advantage of a compromised Jesus. And if nothing else, Satan is a worthy opponent. Sly, cunning, a master at twisting words and their meaning. I know that's not a compliment to the devil, but a warning for you and me. So the sly one, he begins and ends his temptations of Jesus with seven choice words. If you are the Son of God, well, tell these stones to become bread or jump off this temple. 
Of course, God's angels will protect you. Well, friends, what do you think? Is this what Jesus should now do? To show Satan his authority? To make Satan shut up and just fall in line? Should Jesus demonstrate both his power and superiority to Satan here in the desert? And in that middle temptation, Satan offers Jesus all the kingdoms of the world to know and to obey and to honor him. Ah, but it comes with a catch that Jesus would worship Satan. A shortcut, an easy way out, the path of least resistance, avoid the cross, save the agony. Satan offers Jesus a way out, but at what cost? But truly, Satan offers Jesus nothing. If you are the Son of God, those words that indicate this is what the Son of God can do, living proof of his power and authority, these are the very things the Son of God should not do. When we read these words, these temptations on our Lord Jesus, in this action drama, this battle of titans, this ultimate competition, this showdown of two powerful forces. We should be on the edge of our seats, hanging on every word and action, because we are potentially in a state of peril. Our very salvation, our eternal fate, hangs in the balance of what Jesus does next. Here in the desert, one slip, no matter how slight, will determine Jesus' credibility as our Savior, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Does Satan need proof of who Jesus is? No. He knows. Is Satan making friends with Jesus? Offering a mere suggestion to make his path easier? Again, no. I told you Satan was sly. Yes, Satan has an ulterior motive. Once. Just one time. Satan wants Jesus to slip. Just once, Jesus, Satan says, do something for yourself. Make bread. Shut me up. Make it easy. Why do you think they call these temptations? Satan is baiting Jesus to do one small thing but selfish act, thereby negating him from being our perfect and sinless Savior. One act of using divine power for personal gain, one moment straying from God the Father's plan, and Jesus dies on a cross for his own sins, and you and I remain in ours. This is why we are on the edge of our seats as we read of the temptations. Our eternity depends on Jesus' next move, on Jesus' matching wits, remaining righteous, overcoming physical weakness, staying the course. Will our hero prevail? Well, just look at the closing words to each temptation as Jesus answers with God's own word, the true, not twisted interpretation of Scripture. Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. He says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And Jesus says, you shall worship the Lord your God. And him only shall you serve. Jesus does not take the bait. 
Jesus remains without sin, without a selfish deed to be found in him. Jesus, in his human weakness, does not use divine power for personal gain or for advantage over the devil. The word of God is enough. Jesus wins this battle of wits. And he wins not only because he is God in the flesh, but our Lord had another advantage. Jesus had you in mind, and he had me in mind. And Satan would not snatch us from God's hand. Now that's my Lord. That's my Savior. That's my Jesus my hero. You and I can rest in our seats because our salvation is still secure. And that's how this movie, this drama, this competition ends. But despite his loss, Satan still buzzes. If this were boxing, we'd say that Satan is now on the undercard taking on lesser foes, easier challenges, people like you and me. If you are the Son of God, Satan said to convince Jesus to do his own thing. To us, Satan says just that. Do your own thing. Be independent. Be in control. And thus we lose touch with our Savior, lose touch with God's word and will for us, becoming selfish and rebellious children, ensuring Satan of the power that he craves. Now, Satan comes when we are vulnerable, when we are compromised. And I pray because we know it's coming that each of us in our own temptations would remember tonight's gospel and how Jesus was indeed that unmovable object who would not detour, detour from doing the will of God, and that we too would have the strength and the resolve of the Holy Spirit to not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil is a formidable opponent, but our Savior Jesus was and is stronger. Lent has begun, and there is yet another battle yet to come. But rest in your seat. Our hero will again prevail. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.